Hello, my name is Simon Jones and welcome to the world of Lucy Parker, one of America's greatest, most famous and anticipated writers of the 1920s. As you probably know, she was famous not only for her books, but also for her life journey. Lucy Parker showed us through her short stories that her real life can be described very authentically and in a very interesting way. She was a natural talent, writing short stories based on her own life experience. The 1920s were crazy years. Despite of prohibition, people were enjoying life more than ever before. And this is what Lucy Parker was able to implement in her short stories. We will take a closer look at the history of the 1920s, how they shaped her character, opinions, views and work. Historic connections will be explained and specified to enable us to understand the era and the life of people during those years. We start with an expert analysis of Lucy Parker's lifetime's work and the historical context. My name is Taylor Brown and I teach history at Oxford University. I often let my students read books written by Lucy Parker at the beginning of the year. One time a student asked why I'm letting them read books in our history studies. My answer was, you see Lucy Parker's literature isn't just a poor girl's way of expressing her feelings. No, no, no. It also has a significant value for people who are studying that historical period. The way back word excelled for reflected the times she was writing in. For example, at that time there was a big problem in the relationships between old money and new money, and Parker herself married an old money bloke. The story, The Tale of Iris, reflected that exact same problem. Her short stories in a collection called uh, Grey in Black and White all share a, share a theme of a fear of not fitting in, just as she was terrified of not fitting in her husband's lifestyle. In her stories, that fear often leads to questionable decisions, and we can only imagine that's how she was feeling at that time. Parker also struggled with a violent father, uh, which, which was also an issue at that time. A collection of short stories called Hide and Seek and Mansion talk about, uh, uh, talk about exactly that and were to, uh, directed towards people suffering from abuse. Well, her life wasn't only defined by the historical context, but also by her family and close surroundings. My name is Victoria Jacqueline Clement and right now I'm in the Stanford dormitory where I study. Lucy Parker was my great-grandmother. I'm sorrowful she had passed away before my birth. Nevertheless, I'm still very influenced by her, her stories and her lifestyle. She was a woman of golden heart and despite her early life she still saw the good in everybody. I remember the first time my grandfather told me about her. It was in the garden where she said yes to my great-grandfather Alistair. He told me about how hardworking she was, even though she was a wife and it was not expected from her to work. He said that when she was writing, she looked like she was in another dimension. It was also the day when grandfather read me a piece of her work. It was gray in, and gray in black and white, and I shall never forget how I felt when he read it. The dismay of not pleasing the ones you ought to, and a feeling of loneliness, like drowning and not being able to breathe, but everyone around you breathes normal. The next day I went to her grave and read her a story I have written. I was about seven or eight. She inspired me to study literature and psychology later in high school and now in Stanford. Lucy Parker wasn't just an inspiring woman, but also full of joy. And that's why she attracted many fans from all over the world. And Andrew Hollingsworth is one of them. So, um, I first came across Parker when I was in middle school. I read, as I later discovered, uh, one of her first fantasy stories from the collection called Callan, I believe, uh, which is Latin for sky or heaven. Um, I was the kid who didn't really get along with the rest of the class, and both of my parents were hardworking people, so I often drifted away in stories and books. And since middle school, I didn't really stick with Parker's work, books and her work. 
I heard about them from some of my history classes in high school and her name somewhat resonated in my ears uh, but it was until recently uh, where her work was shown to me in a completely different light and to be honest it truly astonished me As we know, Pussy Parker had more collections of short stories, which were very easy to read, intriguing and true to life at the same time. Uh, last but not least is a collection of short stories called Of Femme Fatale and Men. Uh, the stories are about uh, people becoming bootleggers in the Prohibition era. Uh, they are usually women who have to face a lot of different, difficult and different decisions and they uh, talk about their relationships with their families and how being a bootlegger affected their lives. Uh, Baker wrote so many stories which we didn't even mention uh, but all of them talk about issues people faced and in those times. She became very popular at that time because just because of that sense of relatability. They're not just stories, they are uh, they are a view of 1920s through the lenses of uh, young powerful women fighting to be more than just an object. I need to say that we didn't give her enough credit for all the credit she gave us. Old money and new money was a big theme in the 1920s. The differences and stereotypes between those two worlds can still be noticeable, even nowadays. One thing that not many people know is that the marriage of my great-grandmother wasn't an easy one, because she was the first woman who wasn't affluent or known for any particular business to marry into old money. While it may seem that she brought the stereotype that old money only married old money, it wasn't exactly that. Even though she and her husband loved each other dearly, she was, as she herself said, constantly haunted by the apprehensive feeling of not being enough. It is no fact that old money will say and do anything to uphold their reputation. This was the reason for her anxiety that everybody in the family secretly hated her. However, I don't know whether this is true or not, but I know what it feels like not to fit in, because I've always been looked at with people saying that is the clam of the girl. But it was actually Lucy Parker Clement who inspired me to establish my own foundation, which helps young students and kids with physical disabilities or even with lack of confidence to fit in. The foundation was a great project created by her great granddaughter. This is one of the reasons why her fans are more and more interested in her life and some of her books even became the required reading at high schools. At the university, one of our professors gave us a book to read on a certain historical period, the 1920s, and the author was none other than Lucy Parker. To make it short, it was at that time when I fell in love with her writing, and as I later more made more research and read more of her work, she became my all-time favorite author. Uh, her books moved my heart in a direction that no other book could accomplish and as an example in one of her short stories gold she described her disgust of alcohol which is probably probably due to abusive relationship with her father uh, reflected in hide and seek in the mansion uh, later in a story gold uh, there is a scene where the main character is with her sick mother I'm almost sure this is where Parker reflects her real relationship with her mother. Uh, she cares about her in the story, but the circumstances force, force her to lie. And this scene beautifully shows how Parker really gave a piece of her herself in every one of her stories. And what a beautiful person she was. We have heard a lot about Lucy Parker, about her life, about her work and the 1920s. There is surely a lot more to tell. Unfortunately, this is the ending of our 10 minute documentary. Thanks for watching and do not forget to subscribe to our channel. See you next time. Bye.